Welcome to some next level convenience. I can't take credit for the original drink spotter design. All credit goes to Massonomics on that one. But as soon as I saw it, I knew it would be an awesome DIY project. Now I know what you're thinking. Why do I need a drink spotter when I can just use the floor? Yeah, sure, you can use the floor if you want your gym to look like this. No thank you. Let's get started. Power tools, lifting weights, sawdust, it's all very dangerous. Make sure you take the proper safety precautions before getting started. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. In this video, I'll show you a couple ways to make this drink spotter for your gym. The first option is fancy and takes a little more finesse than the second option. I start off with a 1x4 maple board and cut. I add masking tape before cutting with my miter saw to keep chipping and splintering to a minimum. It seems like a lot of extra work, and it is, but the clean cuts are worth it. I do this for everything but the lengthwise cut on the last piece and the oak dowel. I remove the masking tape pieces and lay these out. Now remember that dimensional lumber has some variability in thickness. You may need to modify these cuts slightly. On the seven inch piece, I use my combination square to mark one inch from the top and find the center. I'm using a seven eighths inch oak dowel. So I drill a seven eighths inch hole with a Forstner bit. This only goes in about a half an inch. I swap out the Forstner bit for the countersink bit and drill a hole through the center. Then flip over the board and drill in with the countersink. You'll want to go deep enough for the screw to go in and a portion of the oak plug. I use a sander to soften the edge of the oak dowel. The big key to success for this build is pre-drilling before adding screws. This keeps the wood from splitting. Add a little bit of glue and secure the dowel with the screw. Add a little more glue before placing the oak dowel plug. I cut it flush with the surface of the maple board. A quick run on the belt sander levels everything out. Next, I mark where I'll be drilling the 7 and 5 16 piece. With these holes, it doesn't necessarily matter where they go as long as everything is evenly spaced and symmetrical. When drilling, remember to set the depth deep enough to put a screw in and a dowel plug on top. More pre-drilling. I also add a bit of glue before screwing this piece into place. This 4 and 5 8 piece goes on the front. I repeat the process for this one. I mark the 5 holes I'll need. With the depth already set, these go pretty quick. Now I need to start using clamps to make sure the rest of the pieces are properly aligned. Couple of screws into each side and attach the side piece. Once those are in, I repeat the glue dowel process to plug the rest of the holes. I sand all the oak plugs down to make sure they're flush. Totally forgot to move the camera on this shot. Remember when I used the belt sander earlier? Yeah, just imagine that during this part. I use an eighth inch roundover bit on my table router to round the edges. One last bit of sanding with 220 grit sandpaper to get things nice and smooth before the finish. I use a wipe on polyurethane to coat. It does a good job of protecting the wood and making the grain pop.
Once that dries, the maple returns to its natural color. Of course, you could skip all that fancy stuff. No need for premium hardwood, cut the same pieces out of pine, forget about using masking tape before the cuts, eyeball where to put the screws, don't bother to plug the screws, skip the finish, and you'll be done in a fraction of the time. And it still gets the job done. As always, thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and tell me what you want to see next.